All right. How are you guys doing? My name is Kelsey Maynard. I am the small business advocate for Invest Atlanta. I'm super excited to be here with you so we can share with you how to apply for the City of Atlanta Recovery Fund grant program that we launched. So I'm going to show, share my screen and we're going to walk through the application together so we know exactly what documents to put in, how the application looks, and how quickly it takes to apply. So bear with me as we share my screen and we'll get this thing going. All right, and on the first screen, what we'll see here, we're actually on the Invest Atlanta webpage. And so here on the Invest Atlanta webpage, you're actually, if you go to investatlanta. we'll start at the very beginning, Invest Atlanta. Investatlanta.com is actually a pop-up right here. It says City of Atlanta Business Recovery Fund. You see that? Click Learn More. Here on this website, you'll see the criteria. You'll be able to check your address to make sure your address is in the impact area that we're, that we're talking about for this particular grant program. You better see any ineligibility requirements or criteria that we have for if you're not eligible to receive the grant. Um, also, the webinar that we recorded about the criteria is here. And then right here, it opened up on the 24th, this past Monday at 8 a.m. You can actually click here, and this is where we're going to go to apply for the grant. And it's going to take us to Neighborly. Neighborly is the program that we use to to facilitate our, our application. So here on Neighborly, you'll be able to scroll down where it says, it should take you right to the recovery fund. So COA, City of Atlanta Recovery Fund 2024. For you, it may take you directly to the application. For me, I have to go through a couple of things first. And so the first thing I ask for, please provide the name of the application. This should be your business name. So it's, we're gonna say test, for me, I wanna say test. One, two, three. That's the name of my business. But you should actually put your business name there as this is how it's going to show when we're when people are, uh, the reviewers are reviewing your application, they'll know the name that's associated with this application. Uh, so you want to make sure you put your business name in here. Start an application. <clears throat> First, please use this link below to begin an application. We want to start the application now. Click here to continue. First thing says, for information, please visit our website here. If you want to review the guidelines, the guidelines are actually on the website as well. If you go back to the website, you can see the guidelines and criteria for this grant in more detail. Complete and continue. Next step is ask for our legal business name per the Secretary of State. So we're going to put in here, um, testing one, two, three is what I said the name is going to be. Doing business as test test. <laughs> the address is going to be one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, Peach Tree, because there's so many Peach Tree streets. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia, we're going to do three, zero, three, zero, three, right downtown. NACE code. No, the NACE code is actually uh, located on your Secretary of State documentation. So I'm going to reference my Secretary of State documentation real quick to see what my NACE code is. No, it's on your, I'm sorry, it's on your business license. Your business license will tell you what your NACE code is. So the business license says NACE code is 624410. I'm going to put that in there. 624410. Um, City of Atlanta business license number. You want to put that in there as well. I'm going to make up a number because I don't have one for this. <sighs> but you want to put your accurate city of Atlanta business license number that's actually on your business license. Um, don't worry about the, the, the letters in front. I do believe this is just the numbers. Don't worry about the rest of it, just the numbers. Contact name, testing. Let me say testing, testing. My title is the owner of testing one, two, three. Business phone number, I'm going to say 404 because I know I'm from Atlanta. Two, three, one, two, 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 two. Hope that's nobody's real number, but I made that one up. The business email. Now, this email is important because, no, that's my stuff. Testing at gmail.com. Make sure you put this email. This is the correct email. Take your time with this part because this is how we're going to be able to get in contact with you. You're going to get notifications about your application, the progress is going to go to this email address. So make sure this is the correct email address that you check. 
Now, the number of days I was closed, let's see, I was closed two days, but I was impacted four days. So I'm going to put that there. And here is the impact statement. You have 500 characters or less and say, I had to close my doors because of my water advisory. And I bought water and soda. And it was it was impacted. I was impacted. Let's say I was impacted. And what you want to do here is just tell a story. If you had to buy water, buy soda, if you had to close your doors for a couple of days, if um was closed for two days, put that back in there. Um, had to, we're, we're a child care facility to um, send children home, um, refund money for the week. Tell your story. We're gonna see that, that's it. Complete and continue. On to the next section. Next section says, no, thank you. How many employees do we have? We have 10 employees and two contractors. Now, number, amount of revenue we make for the whole year, 12 months. Let's say you make $250,000. All right, am I certified? No, I'm not. Minority, oh, I'm a minority. Complete and continue. Now here's the documentation part. It says I need my city of Atlanta business license. So luckily I have my city of Atlanta business license pulled up right here. And so this is your 2024 city of Atlanta business license. This is what it should look like. I redacted the information behind it, but this is what you should upload. And so we're gonna upload that file. Where is it? Business license sample right there. Boop. And upload it there. Next is your articles of incorporation. And so that's from the Secretary of State. So you go to the Secretary of State, sos.ga.gov, go to the Secretary of State, you can actually search your business name, um, go to filing history, and then where it says business formation, click that and it will download this document here. Um, if you are an incorporation, it'll say certificate of incorporation. It'll look just like this. And the next document will say articles of incorporation. And it will break down your control number, the name of your business, the the address, the registered agents, all the information will be right here is one document that you download from the Secretary of State. If you are an LLC, it will say Certificate of Organization. It's the same document. So we want to upload that document into the application. All right, we move right along. Operating agreement. Now, an operating agreement will show you, and it tells, like, how your business operates. And so I have a sample here, but it's it's a it's a legal document that you create. If you have partners, if you have other owners that are in the business, that there's investors, if your business, this is a good document to have that you must have for this application. Um, and it's, it's a document that must be signed. And so it breaks down how your business operates, how the money operates, who manages it. Um, if if you were to sell, what does that look like? There's, there's nuances to it, but this is the articles, I mean, the uh, operating agreement and it must be signed. And so we're going to upload our operating agreement. Or if you're in corporation, you have corporate bylaws. That's what you want to upload into this, uh, this section right here. So I'm going to pull up my operating agreement, upload that. Now, we have the save affidavit. Now, save affidavit is the document that's right here. This document verifies the status for the receipt, the receipt of public benefit. So this is an Invest Atlanta affidavit. Please notice where it says Invest Atlanta. It's actually on the application. So up here, the save affidavit is right there. You can actually download it from here or the website. But what you want to do here is put your name. So you want to put my name here. Our name is Test Test right here. So I'm going to put that there. We're going to check. Um, I'm a U.S. citizen, but whatever your your uh, situation is, you want to check the one that's appropriate. And then here, this document has to be notarized. 
And so whatever secure and verifiable document I provided to the notary is what I want to put here. So if I'm going to use my driver's license, so my driver's license, I'm going to type or write driver's license here. And when I get to the notary, I'm going to sign and date and print my name. The notary is going to fill out this information and put their seal here. And this is the document that I want to upload into the application. And so I have my save app, David. I'm going to go ahead and upload mine. And keep on moving through the application. Duplication of benefits. Let's go to that document. And so duplication of benefits, again, is right here at the top of the application. You can click this link and it'll download for you. <clears throat> I set the step. Reading is, it says, must be notarized and submit a copy of your driver's license or passport or whatever secure and verifiable document you use for the save affidavit. And so I skipped that step. I'm glad I read. So I want to make sure I upload my ID as well. And so I want to point out something with this. As you, the very top is in bold. It says, please do not submit personal identifiable information. And so when it says that, I see driver's license is part of it. I state identifications, passport. And so for the ID, when you upload your ID, you can actually use it use in Adobe. You can redact the driver's license number and your date of birth. And so those are two areas that we want to black out or redact before upload this, this particular um, document in, into the portal. And so if you have your passport, block out your passport number and your date of birth. Here, we want to block out the driver's license number and the date of birth before we upload into the application. And so I've already uploaded my ID. I redacted it. No one to the duplication of benefits, which again is right here. Going to the duplication of benefits, this document reads, and it must be turned with the application. It says, the first one says, I, and you write your name if that's here, on behalf of the business name, what's your business name, did receive financial assistance from other funding sources, insurance proceeds, um, excuse, uh, et cetera, for the exact same expenses. This document is asking you, do you intend or will you receive funding from another entity to cover the expenses that you plan on using this grant money for? Um, for the majority of us, we will be saying, no, I did not. So you want to check the second box. Check the box, right? I, test, test, on, be on behalf of the business, test one, two, three, did not receive financial assistance from any other funding source. Again, this is based on your experience. If you happen to file an insurance claim um, because of the situation that you were in, read these things out and check the appropriate box. If you select, I did for here, say I did receive, but um, it's not for the exact same expenses. It says to go on to page two and page two allows you to break down what did you receive money from? So if it was insurance, you wanna say um, how much did the insurance give you? What did you use those funds for? Um, you want to attach the verification saying, here's the insurance claim, the amount where they told me how much I'm going to get here. Documentation that how I spent that money, or how I intend to spend that money. Maybe there's a couple invoices out there. You want to attach that to this document as well. And how much did you actually use from, for instance, we say we got $10,000 from insurance. We used it to fix the flooring. And I uploaded the insurance document saying I received $10,000. I'm going to upload the invoice for how much it costs of the flooring and say the flooring cost me $8,000. I received 10. I would say amount expended $8,000 here. And I would sign and date this particular section. And then I would want to date, date here, sign and print here. Now, if you were like me, I did not receive any funding. So I'm going to check this box, put my name, my business name, and it says go to the signature page on three. So I'm going to go to page three. I'm going to put the date. I'm going to sign it, print my name. And that's what I'm going to upload into the system. And so I did not receive anything. So I'm going to upload my duplication of benefits. Say I did not receive any, any money. Moving on. The next one says, do you have a valid lease or security deed for the property or commercial space? A lease would be, hey, I'm leasing a commercial space. And a deed is if I own the building. And so I am leasing. So I'm going to upload my lease. And this lease needs to be signed. This, this needs to be a valid lease. The lease has to be signed. Uh -uh. The lease needs to be signed by you and the property owner. So make sure that you do that. My lease didn't upload. Lease agreement. There we go.
There you go. And then we're going to go proof of revenue. Now, I know we're getting a lot of questions about that. Proof of revenue or point of sales report for the weeks of May 13th to May 27th. If you do not have a POS system, it says please contact Invest Atlanta. But what we're looking at is proof of revenue. So let's look into that and see what that looks like. Um, I have a couple examples. I'm a daycare center. So how we do our documentation is we go by the number of infants we have and this amount is paid by the parents. So we, for this particular month, excuse the date, we had 12 infants, five toddlers, eight preschoolers, and this is the amount that we charge. So this is the amount that we get per month. But this also breaks down, and so I can break down all the, the, my expenses. But what we're asking for here is for you to break down by week. And so if there was any refunds you had to give, if there was any, any, if you get it weekly instead of monthly payment, they do a weekly payment, show that, show the impact. That's all we want to see is the impact. So upload that saying, hey, this would look like from these dates, this is pre the impact. And then this document here, we want to upload, go ahead, up, upload my uh, day reports. But maybe you don't have a profit and loss statement that looks like that. So let's look at something different. Let's see what it looks like when you have, maybe you document your sales in Excel sheet. And so you, you do it daily. So there's some businesses that have daily sales. And so you want to have your daily sales report pulled up. Let's go ahead and drop that in there. So we're looking at uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you can see what the sales look like for that week. Again, we have a time period that we're looking for. It says from May 13th to May 27th. And then from May 28th to July 11th. Now, I'm aware and we are aware that maybe your the way you do your finances, those, those aren't the dates that you that you um that you run by. Maybe you go sun, Sunday to Saturday. This is like a Monday to Saturday, Monday to Sunday, excuse me. So if you just make sure that the time period that we have here is covered in the documents that you upload. And so I'm gonna go ahead and upload my other one. I'll give you one more example of what a sales report should look like. These aren't the guy when they say it has to look like this. These are just examples that I've seen and used before my own businesses. And so here, another one. Maybe you have an AM shift and a PM shift. You say, you know what? I don't have, I can't give you a weekly one because of the time period. I can give you daily sales. So upload the daily sales. If you have to do those two weeks and you're doing daily sales reports, upload your daily sales reports from your, from your POS or however you document your revenue. That's all we're asking for. So I've uploaded those two. I have my sales reports. I'm going to hit complete and continue. And we're almost at the end. Now, this option here says, in addition, businesses applying for the City of Atlanta Recovery Fund grant may also request $200 per eligible employee. Would you like to be considered for the Employee Recovery Fund? Check here. Wow. So I can get $200 per employee that was impacted. Let me see what this is. So yes. And if you opt into this program, it says this. Number of hourly frontline employees who did not receive full compensation while you were closed. Well, because we were closed, I, was, I have hourly employees. I didn't pay them. So um, I, I'm also an employee. I included it myself. So I'm going to say nine employees were impacted outside of me. Um, under this program, do I agree to provide funds to the employees? Yes, I do. Under this component of the program, do you agree to send investment proof of payment to the employees? I uh, pay payroll registry, a bank statement, check stub within 60 days of the award. Am I going to show you that I pay my employees? Absolutely. Under this component of the program, you agree and understand that if you do not send Investland proof of the payment to the employees, you will be liable to, to reimburse Investland for the funds. Yes, I'm just going to make sure I send you the information. Complete and continue. Is there anything else? This says, <clears throat> with this electron electronic signature, I'm signing say that I did not falsify or be deliberately a, um, a mission of any document. No, I did not. Let's click here to sign. My name is test, test. Yep, you're right there. You already know. Sign. All right, complete and submit. Once the has been submitted, no additional edits can be made to the application unless it's reopened by a program administrator. All right. is submitting. <clears throat> application has been submitted. Wonderful. Uh, your application has been received. You may check the status of your application anytime by logging in. Wonderful. And, and look, that's it. That is the application. I'll walk, be able to walk through the application step by step, answer all the questions, upload all the documentation. 
and now our application has been submitted for the City of Atlanta Recovery Fund. Uh, I feel like that was pretty simple. I don't know how long that took us, but it seemed pretty quick. Did it in one sitting as long as I had all the documentation I needed. Um, and so that is the application, ladies and gentlemen. Um, please go to investlanta.com, go to the recovery fund link that's at the very top, go down and click some, uh, click apply here and get your application in. It ends on July 8th at 5 p.m. And so we have another week and a half to complete this application for your business and your employees. So we thank you for joining us here for this webinar. I hope it answered all your questions. If you have any more questions, feel free to email us at ATL Business Recovery Fund at investatlanta.com. We'll be quickly to respond to your emails and um, hopefully we'll see you with, with receiving a grant. So we thank you and um, apply now, please. Thank you.